flight the next night, and then I got to New Zealand literally two hours before I was supposed to hit stage. Wow. It was insane. Yeah. And I was all fucked up and just like out of it, but got there, soldiered through, and played in front of how many people? I don't know, 30,000 people? 30,000, 40,000. And, yeah. and on top of that, we hadn't practiced for about a month together and we just got a new guitar player by the time it was Mikey Doling and he hasn't played with us yet either so he's fucking flipping out like about to throw up like freaking out I looked at him I'm like you ready for this he's like I don't know man I'm like let's just do it <laughs> so yeah after that was history but uh, that's my memory of uh, playing in New Zealand for the first time it's 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 awesome yeah man that is a, that's a great story actually I mean we'll get to the Stone Star stuff sure. we'll get to Hydrograde but I was just thinking about you know the, the, the Soulfly stuff that you did play with and then the Max stuff you played with and you said you, you know warmed up with some Sepultura tunes yeah. I mean um, from your ethnic background having a Cuban background mm -hmm. you know that kind of percussive way you know very musical people I mean is that influence now the way you play still oh yeah I mean that's 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 always going to be part of my playing I mean you'll hear that maybe not so much in, in Stone Sour but it's the, it's in there that kind of that kind of approach and playing like I, I it's, it's in there yeah. it's in the pocket and the groove and the and the, the, the fills that I choose to do it's it's definitely a, a Latin background in there yeah well in terms of in terms of drummers I mean, who's influenced you? I mean, I'm, you know, we know you from obviously, you know, been in hard rock and metal and, and hardcore bands, but I mean, so many different genres of yeah. music I listen to, and mm -hmm. so it's really hard to, to nail exactly like my influences. But I mean, they all my influences go from, I mean, I'll go chronologically as some as like as listening for the first time. I mean, like uh, Clive Stubberfield from James Brown's band. I can't remember the names of some of the other drummers in, in the R&B and soul Motown world, but a lot of those drummers definitely in, inspired me to play. And then, of course, following that would be John Bonham from Zeppelin and Phil Rudd from ACDC or Bill Ward from Black Sabbath, Peter Chris from Kiss, Neil Peart, Stuart Copeland, Keith Moon. I mean, I could go on and on. I got in, uh, so many influences and inspirations. I mean, not even just from drums, but just from... Um, even just soundtracks I've listened to and electronic music, you know, that's another influence as well, you know. Yeah, take a little little of something from everyone and, and mix it up and make your own thing. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It, it's in there. Like I said, it's all in there. It comes out somehow, you know. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, you, you were in Soulfly for, for, for what for you was an extended period of time because your career, you've jumped around a lot. But now Stone Sour feels like something that's a lot more solid for you, a lot more yeah. permanent for you. I mean, how, how is that relationship and, 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 and that band, is that, is, you see yourself playing in Stone Sour in five, 10 years still? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, the day I joined the band, I, I felt I, I, was, I was definitely gonna be in here for a while. And here we are 11 years later, four or five albums later too. Do I foresee that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for however long we can go, you know what I mean? Yeah, right now. Yeah. I definitely won't, I won't be stopping anytime soon to play. I'm always gonna play even to my end of my days, you know? Yeah. I plan to keep playing until I can't play anymore. <laughs> yeah, do you get the brushes out and join the jazz band when you're ready? <laughs> no, we're still gonna play these two Bs. <laughs> yeah. nah, I, I, I'll, of course I would do that. I yeah. love playing, um, I like playing unplug uh, uh, acoustic gigs too. I usually like, I just did one with uh, Corey and Christian about a week and a half ago. I got on a co-home, which is a box. Yeah. You know, the box with the hole in it. Mm. You know, you basically, you, you beat it. You can get a kick and a snare out of it. And I played a whole show with them with that. That was fun. I'd yeah. never done that before, and I'd definitely love to do it again. You yeah, know? Man, that's cool, man. And, and in terms of Stone Sour as a unit, I mean, from the outside looking in, because you know he's such a visual person and such a, a, a you know a mouthpiece. Outside uh, looking, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I guess I guess most people go, "This is Corey Taylor's band," but actually. You know, how does the band work in terms of not just songwriting, but, but the entire approach of agreeing on artwork, agreeing on, and all that kind of stuff? It's a band. It's a gang. It's not just one person. And Corey will tell you that, too. We're, we're a gang. We're a, a band. And all, all the decisions come from us. You know, we yeah. talk about it, we work it out, we make it happen. I mean, you, you guys have done some really, really interesting shit. You know, the House of Golden Bones, you know, two-part concept album. Nobody mm -hmm. does that anymore. That, that was no. really cool. Comic books that come with that. That's a lot of Corey's uh, ideas. He, he really, he's he's definitely the mastermind behind all, all of that. The, the, the comic books, the concept, the story. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's his baby. And we just kind of like added to it and made it more, enhanced it more. How, how often is that conversation had when you're, you know, you, you're rehearsing and you're, you're at a writing session mm -hmm. and he starts building up some lines? The amount of times you, you, you put the sticks down and go, 
hang on, man. What the fuck are you even talking about? What's going on here? Well, here, you know, here's the thing. When we do jam together, he's not singing. He's not coming up with any lyrics on the spot. He, that's kind of an afterthought. He okay. does it afterwards. We basically get together and we write together. Like, sometimes it'll just be me and Tooch. Or be me, Tooch, and Johnny. Sometimes it'll be just me and Josh. And then once we hash out our ideas and how, you know, have little rough sketches, we'll, then we'll all get together and listen to each other's sketches and then try to elaborate on them more and, and shape them into Stone Sour songs. Yeah. Then, when that's finished, then Corey will take them and start writing lyrics to it. And then you'll surprise the fuck out of us <laughs> a month later. Like, holy shit! You know what I mean? <laughs> he's, he's got some. He's got some insane ideas. I love it. He strikes me as being a, a kind of like a this generation or a next generation Henry Rollins in a way. In the wow. way he's outspoken about things. He's not afraid to put it out there. He kind of he's written the books. He's kind of you know just streams out of him. Um, it, it, being in a band with him, do you feel it? I can see that. You know, yeah. I mean, he's definitely in, influenced and inspired by Rollins. It's funny you say that. He, he's he's a uh, Definitely a fan of his work, and I think it's mutual between uh, him and Henry. Yeah, I totally see that. You guys obviously um, have got a massive body of work now, um, and you've been doing all these cover EPs as well, you know, that you've been dropping here, dropping there, dropping yeah. there. I mean, for me, that must be like almost going back to the school band, just having having a laugh, having some fun, just jamming That's some exactly shit out. exactly what it was for. It's just, it just for us to have fun. You know, Corey was out doing Slipknot, so we had, you know, all this time, and we've talked about it for years. Let's, we should do, you know, let's do a fun cover EP. Why not, you know? Um, and also, it kept, it kept us, you know, our momentum and our name going and stuff like that, which is great. Keep us out in the public. And, and it's just fun to do, you know, to play those. We grew up on all, all those songs, listening to them. So it was fun for us to play them, you know. Yeah. What, what was the process in choosing your, your, your songs? Because, I mean, I, I, I imagine that between the, you know, five of you, you could have probably come up with a hundred options. Well, we came up with a couple options each, and then we just narrowed them down to what you, what you hear now. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so how, would you, how do you think... The band has evolved from, you know, Bother in the first album to Hydrograd and what we're hearing now with, you know, number three and things. Well, definitely, uh, we're not scared to explore. We're definitely more into exploring other regions of music and not afraid to do it. And just, you know, it's definitely stepped up a lot, you know, from the first record. The first record's great too, although I wasn't involved in it. I love the first album. I like every album that I've been involved mm -hmm. in with the band and and past members I've played with, but I mean the lineup that we have now, I think it, it's uh, it's where it should be, and it sounds good. Yeah, it feels good for me. Stone Sour. I always go back to the first Stone Sour record I heard, right. and yeah, thirty thirty one fifty. The intro, the drum intro to that. I didn't play that. You didn't play that. I wasn't in the studio at that oh, time. Man, because, because that is fucking killer. Here's here's a story behind that. I would have played it, but at the time they were going to keep you know the original recording for it, and then they decided to 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 move on and, and re-record it. But by then I was already out of the country. At that time, I was actually Sepultura's drummer, touring drummer at the time. Wrong. I just came in to do the record. I gave them the idea of calling Shannon Larkin to play that. He's the only other guy that I knew that could just jump in and do it. Yeah. And that's that's what you have. Yeah, yeah. So that's now right. I have to play that Man. every day. <laughs> <laughs> play some other Thanks, motherfuckers. Shannon. Yeah. Man. No, I, I loved it when I when I when I heard when I heard what he's recorded. I'm like, oh fuck, this is great. It's gonna be awesome to play live every day. Yeah. It's, um, just, it's just like it's one of the best old moments I think there is because it just kicks you in the face immediately and, yeah. and sets the tone for what's about to happen. Yeah. You know. Pretty much. The reason I, I was gonna put that forward was to ask you and I, a lot of artists will dodge this and say songs are like children but do you have a favorite stone sour song to play live live right now i really love love playing like the, the two older tunes that we just put up we, we have get inside and blotter we play those back to back i mean i've always loved playing them from when i first joined the band but we hadn't played them in a bunch of years so we just started on this on this tour playing them so i'm really into those those are fun to play i really love playing uh fabulous off the new album yeah. that's fun that was that looked like it was a um, fucking crazy video that shoot. Too. <laughs> yeah, it's funny that concept though. I, I came up with that video concept years ago, and we were gonna do that for another song off Audio Secrecy. And after we recorded the song, I remember Corey turning around to me. He's like, "We should use your your wacky wavy uh, tube man arm uh, <laughs> idea." I'm like, "Yeah, for this." He's like, "Yeah, dude, think about it." I'm like, "Nah, it can yeah. work." So, you know, we hired a bunch of those things and CGI would them all over the room. And it looks like there's a packed house of 4,000 of them. <laughs> yeah. You, <know? laughs> you, you fooled me. I was like, fuck out of here. That's Paul Brown, man. He's, he's, he's a killer, uh, uh, you know, director. He, he, he took care of that. 
very easily. He, he's, he's amazing. Yeah, so you, you, that was your idea. Where, where did the inspiration come from? Is that looking at a tour bus window going past used car lots? Or? Actually, yeah, that's the idea I got it from. And I thought it was the most ridiculous idea the most, to, to do something like that because it's just a heavy kind of band, heavy music, and juxtaposed with that. Yeah. I'm like, why not? Like, a bunch of happy, like... <laughs> <laughs> you know? and, it's, and a lot of people are like, is that what you think of the crowd? I'm like, no, I don't think that of the crowd. It's nothing to do with taking a piss of the crowd. It's just more like just something abstract. And, you know, having fun. Having fun, exactly. Yeah. yeah, quality, man. Quality. Well, for you, Roy, when you're um, obviously on, you're on tour a lot, but when you get a break, what do you like to do away from Stone Sour, away from music? I just spend time with my family, just be with my, my, my wife and my daughter and, you know, and work on a little bit of music here and there on my own, you know, for fun. I do session work when I'm not working in the studios in LA. So you're always working? I'm always working. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing, man. It's a great yeah. thing. Hey, good stuff, Roy. Thanks right. very much for your time, brother. Thank you. Looking forward to the show. Right uh, enjoy the rest of your tour, Ray, and safe travels. Thanks, man.